Hey there, Fletcher from All Things Overlanding here. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a question that I see popping up more and more on Facebook groups, overlanding forums, that kind of thing, which is how do you afford to either go overlanding more or even maybe full time? You know, people are asking, you know, what kind of job do you have? How did you get there? What progression did you go through? So again, today I'm gonna to kind of talk through my progression because I've definitely noticed since I kind of started doing overlanding and more camping out of my vehicle four or five years ago that I have literally changed jobs and like taken a different path in my life than I would have otherwise because I wanna pursue this hobby, this lifestyle. Um, so again, I'm gonna talk through kind of my progression. I'm gonna give you my experience and talk a little bit about how I got to where I'm at now and what I do. So hopefully that'll be helpful for you if that's what you're looking for. If you wanna learn more about kind of some tips and tricks and, and potential jobs that may work out for going full time or at least getting more freedom to do more overlanding trips, uh, then this will be a great episode for you. So without further ado, let's get into how do you afford to do overlanding more or even full time and how do you find a job to do that? All right, guys, so as I mentioned, today I'm talking about how you know you can get a job or what type of jobs work best for supporting either full-time travel or at least more freedom and more flexibility to be able to take more trips. Um, you know, when I was younger, most jobs, you maybe get a week, maybe two weeks, if you're really lucky, uh, for vacation per year. But then you gotta keep in mind, there's always gonna be family stuff. There's gonna be holidays, right? There's gonna be Christmas, if you're, you know, into that. There's gonna be all these different holidays, spring break, fall break, things like that, when you're gonna have to take off from work and use those days. So then when you take those days out and really kind of think about what's left over for me just to go on overlanding trips, it gets a little sparse, right? It can get a little difficult. So again, I've seen this kind of popping up on Facebook groups, overlanding groups, things like that. Quite a few replies, quite a few people um, sort of pitching in their ideas and stuff. So I'm gonna touch a little bit on what I've seen out there just to kind of give you like a broader spectrum um, based on what I've seen other people say. So kind of like a polling, if you will, of other people. Then I'm gonna kind of dive into like my progression and kind of how I started and, and what has taken me through my career path more recently where I've been able to go more and more and have that flexibility. Um, and then, you know, I'm just going to kind of finish up with what my goals are and where I want to go and what I'm trying to do in the next, you know, two to five years to be able to go even more. So let's get started with the first part here. What have I kind of seen? So again, there's a ton of Facebook groups out there, tons of overlanding themed things like Overlanding USA is a really big Facebook group. And that's where I think the question was asked recently. And it has like 400 replies, right? So kind of what I saw in those replies is some sort of, you know, one of these few things. Um, either they sold everything, right? Maybe they sold their house, they sold a bunch of assets that they had, cars, things like that, bought a rig and basically are living out of their rig and working remotely, right? So, or maybe not even working, right? Maybe they just literally changed their lifestyle. They're not trying to keep up with the Joneses anymore. They don't have a mortgage payment. They don't have to pay utilities. They are just living out of their vehicle full time and traveling. If you can afford to do that, that's fantastic, right? Like I would love to do that. I have a, a nine and a 12 year old. I don't think that uh, I could convince my wife and my kids to just like sell our house and not have a home anymore. And uh, it would also make getting them to a school and into a school a little more difficult. Um, but you know, but that is a great option if you can do it. If you are in, you know, a little bit older and retired, or if you are a single person and you don't have to worry about those other restrictions, definitely if you want to. I mean, a good example would be the folks at Mo Leisures, X Ventures. Um, some friends of mine, they have an Xterra and they live out of they for like the last three plus years, they've lived out of that thing full time. And they basically did that. Like they sold all their stuff off and they decided, look, we don't have to have a bunch of stuff. We want to have experiences, right? We want to go and see all the national parks in America. And that's what they've been doing for the last three years. And I'm super jealous. It's amazing, right? It's really cool. Um, so that is one thing that I'm kind of seeing. Another thing is people having jobs that have a lot of flexibility, either whether it be like entrepreneurial and you own your own business, right? And you can kind of hire people to do a lot of the work underneath of you. And then you can say, hey, I'm out of here for three weeks or whatever. And, and the business kind of runs itself. So that is another option, right? But for a lot of us, especially younger folks, like I'm, I'm not old. I, I don't like to think I'm old. I have a lot of gray hair, I guess. Um, but I'm not necessarily a, a spring chicken anymore, right? I'm not, I'm not super young anymore. I'm not 25 anymore. Um, 
but for younger folks that can seem a little intimidating, although I like to think that the newer generations are more and more entrepreneurial than even the older ones were, right? So a lot of you guys and gals out there are already doing that. You have side hustles, you're doing all this extra work, you're working towards that goal. Um, that's kind of been more along the lines of my approach. Um, and what I'm doing to try and get to that level. And I'll talk about that a little bit more here in a second. And then the third version is get a remote job, right? Like just any job where you can work remote. So if you're like a graphic designer, if you are like IT support or something, you can't be too far out. You have to have access to some Wi-Fi or at least to some really good cell phone signal to be able to do your work. But if you could, you know, write content for websites or or something like that, some sort of a thing where you just need a computer and a, an internet signal to be able to work, and then it doesn't really matter where you are, that's an option too. So those are kind of the big three that I'm seeing as like good options or realistic options for you to be able to get out and go explore more. Okay, but now I wanna talk a little bit about kind of my trajectory. So, you know, I, I'm 42 years old now in 2022, so I was born in 1980 good year. Um, but, you know, when I was born and, and kind of being raised by my parents, the, the sort of rules were you got to get, uh, you know, you got to go to college, you got to get out and get a job, you got to get married, you got to have kids. These are the rules you have to live by. No questions asked, right? That's what everybody had to do. Went out, went to college, had no idea what I wanted to, wanted to do, ended up with a forensic anthropology degree, which is uh, super useful. Used that many, many times. Uh, no, not at all. Um, but so then I got out and I actually went and worked for Enterprise Rent-A-Car when I first got out of college because here's why, listen for this logic. I liked cars and I wanted to drive as many as possible and they, I had heard that they had a good management program. So I, I was like, you know what? My degree is useless. I might as well go somewhere where they're gonna train me how to take care of customers, how to like manage a, a profit and loss, you know, learn businessy stuff, sales stuff, finance stuff and then maybe transition that into a job later on in life. And I tell you what, that actually was probably the best decision I made because enterprise was fantastic. Yeah, there are a lot of downsides to it. It's essentially a pyramid scheme, but it was they did teach me a lot of really great stuff and I still use tons of that stuff in my daily life today. Um, so I went through that, went into banking for a little while for some because I had finance in my title at enterprise and then that carried over into banking. Hated banking, hated retail, do not like, you know, people being mad at me about a fee getting charged on their account. I mean, I didn't charge the fee. I don't want the, to take the fee, but the bank doesn't give me a choice, right? Um, so I got out of that after about four years and then I, I kind of randomly fell into marketing. And so marketing was like, that was a big change for me where it got me out of that retail space. It got me out of the, you know, in enterprise, you're washing cars, it's, it's super laborious work. Got me behind a desk, got me to where it was more like relationship based, right? Where I was managing 25 clients and helping them do their marketing. They were automotive clients because of my automotive background. Um, so working with dealerships to do marketing for them, create newsletters, that kind of thing. And then that kind of changed my whole trajectory. And I started to go down this road of marketing and, and later on got into like operations and stuff. Um, became a COO at a 20-person-ish at a marketing agency and kind of ran a team of marketers and, and the day-to-day -day operations and HR and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so then that, that then gave me the experience that I needed then to kind of transition into the role that I'm in now, which now I work for a company that is actually technically a tech company. We also have some services that we provide for businesses like lead generation and cold calling and things like that for businesses that want to grow their businesses. Um, and I'm the COO at that company now. So it's, it's a small team. Like when, whenever I got hired, I was the third hire. Um, and then we lost one person off the team. So then it was just two of us for a while. Now we're up to about 10 people total on the team. Um, and the company's doing really well and there's a ton of flexibility. And because it's, you know, the first two are kind of like the CEO and myself, we are able to give ourselves more flexibility. And because we both worked at these big companies like the enterprises and the chases of the world, we know how crappy big companies can treat people. So we don't want to be like that. We don't want to live with that. We want to, you know, live to, we want to live to work, not work to live. Right, so we are trying to make it into like a lifestyle business where we have that flexibility. So through all of that, now I finally got to this point where I'm like, look, I don't need to make a bajillion dollars, right? I don't need to work 60 hours a week. I'd rather work 35 hours a week and leave at 10 a.m. on a Friday and have a three day camping weekend, right? Get out of here and, and avoid all the traffic and get out into the woods, you know, by Friday afternoon. Um, so that's kind of where I've come to. So. I, 
it took a long time. And again, I had to kind of break that that chain in my brain that, you know, ha had been just sort of beaten into me my whole life of like, you got to go to one company and you need to work there until you retire and you give them everything and, and then they'll take care of you when you're 65. Like I'm 42. I don't want to, if I'm working when I'm 65, I, I don't want to be working when I'm 65. Let me just say that. If I could get to like 45, even 50 maybe, and, and I'm still working, that's maybe too much. Like I, we want to be done soon and we're busting our butts now to get to that point. Um, where we can retire earlier, where we don't have to like the whole this whole work till you're 65 or 70 thing. I think that's the man, right? Trying to keep us down. Like that's old school factory job mentality where they just want to push you into a corner and and get as much uh, production out of you as as a company possibly can while giving you as little as they as they can. Right? That's just kind of how it works. I want to get as much as I can as quick as I can so I can stop working and then go enjoy my life, then go live my life and be able to do more overlanding. So that kind of takes us perfectly into the third part of this episode where I, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, where I want to go and how I'm going to get there. And I want to tie this back to you guys too, because this is about you guys, right? So I'm going to talk a little bit about how I want to get there and why I want to get there, but I want to make it general enough that any of you guys out there could kind of see that there's opportunities, right? There's opportunities even if your main job is retail or even if your main job is, you know, kind of like a fixed eight hour a day kind of thing, there are ways to get side hustles. There are ways to make additional money if you're willing to work and willing to hustle or if you are willing to make a change in your career and go to something like more like what I've done, like literally change jobs to something that is more entrepreneurial and, and maybe even a little bit more risky to get that reward so that you can get out earlier that, you know, you are able to do that. So let's talk a little bit about that. So again, my goals with this is, you know, I'm working with a guy that I really, really trust and respect. He's fantastic. He's the CEO of my company. We trust each other implicitly. We both know that we couldn't do the business without each other. So like if anything ever happened to him or me, like the business would just shut down. Like it, it just would. That's where we're equally dependent on each other. Um, but as a result, that gives us a ton of freedom, right? If he wants to take off for a week, just go, man. Like I'll, I'll cover for you and vice versa. So find a team, find something, some sort of a company where they actually legitimately care about you and they want to see you succeed and they want to see you be happy and, and have the flexibility. Like if, if flexibility is more important than a paycheck, you know, work that into your negotiations when you're going to that place. Look for businesses that support that stuff, not just businesses that have like a pool table or like cool stuff, but they actually want to work you to death and they're just trying to trick you, right? But more like places that really, really do actively take care of their employees. You know, talk to other people that work at that company, see what the actual culture is like before you move, right? Find a job at a place where you will be respected and you will have that sort of flexibility. And if you can't find that, because that's really hard, right? Like I know as I'm saying this, that you're probably sitting there going, yeah, sure, of course we all want that, but it's impossible. It's not, I've seen a, a few businesses, but you, I mean, it is a small percentage, right? It's tough to find. Um, but if that's not an option, if you can't find that thing, then find something that at least gives you the minimum flexibility that you need to be able to take some trips. And then you can always work on like a side hustle to get yourself again financially to that point where you've got enough extra money to go on more trips, right? To afford more gear, that kind of thing. Whatever, whatever you need to do, right? So I'll give you examples of what I'm doing. So right now I've got this YouTube channel, right? I make a little bit off of this. I'm not getting rich by any means, but you know, between affiliate links and YouTube revenue and all this stuff, I mean, it's, it's a few hundred dollars a month at least every month, right? Sometimes I get free gear sent to me and things like that, which supports the hobby and is really interesting and appreciated, right? Um, I sell patches, I sell stickers, things like that on my website. Again, I'm not lighting the world on fire, but if I make an extra 50, 100 bucks in a week, it's beer money, right? It's gas money, that kind of thing. There's a million ways that you can find side hustles like that. Um, at the same time, I had a buddy that has a little small company um, where he, I mean, it's actually pretty big, it's not that small, but he has a company where he makes custom retrofit headlights. And he had posted up a couple months ago, like, hey, if anybody wants to help, um, I need somebody just to like in the morning and, and in the evening to check customer success stuff and reply to people for me. I said, sure, man, you know, I could do that. I'll make a couple of extra bucks a month and, and I'll help you out. Like I want to help you out and, and take care of your customers and stuff and support your business. So I started doing that. So I got my main job. I'm doing a little customer success job. I'm doing the YouTube thing. Like I'm, I'm not just sitting around watching Netflix, right? Like, and you can do that if that's what you want to do, but it's just going to take longer to get to that goal. It's going to take longer for you to get to that point where, you know, you're, you're able to stop doing the day-to-day the -day grind to get out and explore more. So 
that being said, my goal again is, you know, I love the company that I'm at. I found that place where like I feel like supported and, and that I have the flexibility and we are all aligned. Everybody in the company is aligned on getting it growing to the point where, you know, everybody's making great money. Everybody's super happy. And for my boss and I to be able to have more flexibility and have enough people and, and sort of support underneath of us that the company can kind of run itself. And we are more thinking strategically and high level, focusing on growing the business versus like just being in the day to day of the business. So realistically, goal is three to five years to be out and doing something else. Now, when I say retire, I'm not talking about, again, retiring and drinking Mai Tais on the beach or sitting around watching Netflix all day. I will still hustle and do the YouTube stuff. That just means I'll be able to do more YouTube videos, right? I'll be able to do better videos. I'll be able to afford better gear, right? Um, I will always do something. I'll do consulting stuff. I don't, I'm, I'm not a lazy person. I can't just sit around. So I, I have to be doing something or I'm gonna go crazy. Um, but I wanna be doing, you know, I, and I like my job and I like the work that I do, but I don't wanna do just like day-to-day -day work all the time. I wanna be making more videos. I wanna be doing, you know, have more focus on the podcast, on YouTube, that sort of thing. Um, making content for you guys, getting out on bigger and better trips, right? Having better and better videos of awesome, amazing trips. Talking about all kinds of gear and things like that. Um, so that's kind of the goal for me is just to keep hustling, keep hustling, try and, you know, develop more and more side hustles, more and more ways to bring in additional income, save, save, save until I can get to that point where I have some flexibility and, and can get out on even more trips and make more videos and podcasts for you guys. Um, so I'd love to hear from you guys. Like, how are you guys doing it? I'm sure I know a lot of you guys have talked to me about how you travel all the time and how you do freelance stuff and that sort of stuff. So post up in the comments below. Let me know your sort of hustle. What do you do? How do you make this lifestyle, this hobby work, right? Um, if you're new to the podcast or the, the video here on YouTube, I do drop a couple videos every single week, gear reviews, do-it-yourself modifications, this type of thing, a podcast slash vlog every week. So if you're into overlanding, camping, gear, modifying your vehicle, anything like that, this is the channel for you. I'd love to have you. Click that subscribe button. Click the bell to be notified when new videos drop. Um, on the podcast, you know, drop a five-star review if you like the podcast. Um, you know, add it to your favorites, whatever, whatever you want to do. I'd love to have you wherever you want to hang out. Also in the description down below are links to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, we've got a Patreon page that's slowly growing and we've got a Discord that goes along with that 24 seven chat with me, hang out, bunch of cool guys and girls just hanging out over there talking about overlanding stuff, talking about mods, that kind of thing. So if you want to be a part of that, check out the Patreon page. And then of course, last but not least, the Newbie Overlanders Facebook page. This thing is almost to 10,000 uh, members now. It's been about eight months, nine months, eight months now. So that's amazing, blows my mind. Every time I look at those numbers going up and how many people are joining every week, it's awesome. And I'm super excited to see all these great conversations happening in there. So if you wanna join a great supportive group of people that are just getting into overlanding, come check out that Facebook group. Again, linked in the description below. Um, but that's it for this week, guys. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time.